Hey everyone, this is Fabio Loren and welcome back to a new video. Although this is going to be slightly different from usual. Originally this was intended to be a short video response, but it, it devolved, I would say, into something much bigger. Since this is a very interesting topic on which there is a lot to say, I was taking some notes the other day while on a train to London while listening to some Rush, and all of a sudden I realized that I wrote an friggin' essay, and I was like, what happened? Though it further proves how interesting this topic is and how much to say there is. So I've decided to record this as a sort of mini solo podcast as I'm drinking a lovely cup of coffee, so bear with me. Um, I don't know how long uh, this is going to be, but you don't need to watch this as nothing is going on, it's just me talking. Put this in the background as you're doing your chores like washing dishes or mowing the lawn, I don't know. Um, but definitely, once you've listened to this, leave comments as I would be extremely interested to read what you guys have to say about this topic. So, uh, Eric London RPG has made a video recently titled This is the Golden Age of RPGs in which he states his reasons why this current generation to him is the golden age of RPGs instead of the traditional accepted one, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1, you know. I have to say though that I disagree with him especially very much on the overall argument. But let me start by saying that I completely agree with Eric on the fact that a lot of excellent RPGs have been released this past decade, after all, only an idiot would deny that. But we are far from being into the golden age. And let me explain the fact that I'm not saying this just because of the back in the day games were better, everything sucks nowadays, kind of no silly nostalgia, not at all actually. Um, first of all, let's clarify the obvious, of course, uh, this is entirely, everything I'm going to say, it's entirely based on my personal opinions, so you might disagree with me, and that's totally fine, of course. For example, I will, as I will explain later, I disagree with including the Super Nintendo as part of the traditional Golden Age, so as you can imagine, this is going to be a very subjective topic. Second, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the true golden age of RPG is, as it's a matter of opinion, as I just said. What really matters is spreading the love for RPGs. But I think it is an interesting topic, and I'm doing this video response sort of podcast thing, uh, because I think that Eric didn't mention a lot of important elements that, to me, severely weaken his all uh, argument. Though, at the end of the day, I'm not going to say he's wrong, as, after all, who am I to say that? Um, he's stating his opinion, as he should, and it's totally fine, but I think he could have spent at least five more minutes on that video to make a much better argument. I understand that the average Joe on YouTube has the attention span of a goldfish, but if you're making an argument and don't elaborate, or don't elaborate enough, I'm not, I'm not going to take it seriously, or I'm not going to support it, or I'm, or I'm going to think it's a weak argument. So, uh, obviously, nothing personal against Eric London is doing fine on YouTube, but this is how I think of anything, not just on gaming. So let's begin. I think, first and foremost, that there is a common misconception regarding the golden age term, and I'm using quotations, when talking about RPGs, thinking that it's entirely based on the quality of games, and I disagree very much on this, or at least I think it's not the most important element of the equation, far from it, actually. If your entire argument, kinda like Eric's, is entirely based on this, then every generation has been a golden age, if you consider yourself a true RPG fan, because every generation has its share of fantastic RPGs. After all, we had amazing RPGs already by the 8-bit generation. Uh, Dragon Quest 1 through 4, Fantasy Star, Final Fantasy 1, Zelda 2, Ease the Vanished Omens, and the list goes on. And I'm, I'm not even talking about PC games here, as it's not really my area. 
And back then, I wasn't too much into them. I mean, Ultima, and I don't remember if it was 6 or 8, but I'm pretty sure I played both of them. Uh, one of these two were was my, fa my first RPG I ever played, and I hated it so much. But even I know very well that during the mid to late 80s and early 90s, PC RPGs were experiencing a sort of first golden age, thanks to powerhouse titles such as the already mentioned Ultima series, Bard's Tale, Eye of the Beholder, the Might and Magic series, and so on. Also, look at the generation that it's very dear and near to my heart, the DS and the, P the, DS and the PSP. We had amazing, even phenomenal RPGs on those consoles, which I would argue are more important for the genre than the current one, and yet no one said that this was the new golden age, simply because on main consoles, PS3 and 360, the genre was basically irrelevant. Sure, we had big titles on those consoles, for example, the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, although it's quite divisive among fans, to say the least, uh, the two Zillia games, Nier, which alone is more than enough, uh, Tales of Vesperia, Lost Odyssey, Fable, Mass Effect, even though 2 and 3, which are amazing, are barely RPGs in my opinion. But for what I'm saying, the genre was undoubtedly experiencing a strong decline. Again, we have to distinguish here, Western RPGs, on the other hand, did, on, on one hand, did pretty well, thanks to the success of Fallout 3 and the Elder Scroll games, but JRPGs, according to mainstream press, on the other hand, were suffering. I remember seeing so many articles titled The End of JRPGs, Are JRPGs Finished?, while the genre was going strong on DS and PSP, where we had phenomenal titles such as Radiant Historia, the Devil Survivor's Duology, Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest remakes of 4, 5, and 6, which are mandatory if you are a JRPG fan. Um, Dragon Quest 9, the Etrian Odyssey series, started on the DS. The definitive version of Chrono Trigger is the one on the DS. On the PSP, uh, we have Trails in the Sky that started there, the Gaga Trilogy. Uh, the two Star Ocean games, Ease 7, Hexis Force, Crimson Gem Saga, Persona 3 Portable. I mean, these consoles have deep and great libraries of RPGs that, to me, really help the, game, the genre staying strong and relevant. And of course we have to mention the Wii, since it's the same generation as the PS3 and 360. And there were interesting titles on that, but obviously what stand out on that console was Xenoblade Chronicles, arguably one of the best and most important games of its generation. So, from what I'm saying though, uh, up until now, why are we considering this generation a period of decline, considering the, uh, the quantity and quality of games I've mentioned so far? We're pro we're probably we were spoiled during the previous generations, to be honest, but in reality, it has to do with an important element that uh, Eric didn't mention or barely touch it, if so indirectly, uh, on this video, and it's actually, I think, the most important part of the equation. So, let's get to the point. The so-called Golden Age, and what is a Golden Age? What truly defines a Golden Age uh, for a video game genre to me is how relevant the genre is in the grand scheme of things, i.e. how relevant the game is in the market. So if we want to be technical, a golden age is simply a more romantic way of saying that a certain genre is at the peak of its market profitability and popularity. But let's keep the romantic lenses on because it's much better than talking about ugly economics here. Um, if you ask me, uh, Fabrio Loen, when was the golden age of RPGs in your opinion? Clear and simple. And let me clarify, I'm talking about JRPGs here. Uh, Western RPGs have a very different timeline. So, if you ask me about JRPGs and their golden age, my answer, I think, would always be, without a doubt, the period between and including PS1 and PS2. These consoles, after all, were defined by the JRPGs, and most important, the genre was at the peak of its mainstream relevance. 
This is also the reason why I would argue that the Super Nintendo should not be considered a part of the Golden Age. Here in Europe, for example, JRPGs were basically nothing since they weren't being released. As a kid, I didn't play Chrono Trigger, Mario RPG, Final Fantasy IV and VI, or Earthbound. Uh, I would say that the Super Nintendo, being the Golden Age, is primarily the view of North American gamers who grew up with these games, and I can totally understand this. In any case, however, the Super Nintendo has the merit of increasing the JRPG's popularity, again, especially in North America, setting the stage for its explosion during the PlayStation 1 era. Enter Final Fantasy VII, the game that is considered the responsible for the JRPG boom of the mid-90s. I think it's a bit more complex than that. I mean, without taking anything from Final Fantasy VII, which... It's an important game, I don't like it very much, and I have zero interest in for the remake, but its, it's importance and role cannot be denied. Um, though I think it's more of a point of arrival rather than a starting point, in my opinion, but at the same time you can also say that it's the starting point of the next phase of JRPGs in the West, hence its importance. Uh, long story short, Final Fantasy VII, to me, it's more of the perfect example of the right game in the right place at the right time. Of course, we don't need to talk about the insane high quality games that we had during this generation. So many classic games that set the quality bar so high, content wise in particular, I would argue. And it continued during the PS2 era. Now technology improved, allowing skilling developers. Uh, to push the boundaries even further, even though I think the PS, that PS1 JRPGs are extra charming in a way because of the technical limitations, but this is an entire different topic and we have enough things to say here, let's not delve into that. Um, then something changed and following the PS2 generation, JRPGs fell back into their niche status. Again, on main consoles, why they're kept going strong on handheld, hence why I think DS and PSP are so important. Or did they? I would say not really. And here we are coming to the most important aspect of this conversation, and it's what Eric Landon barely touched in his discussion. Times have changed and gaming with them. Gaming today is extremely different from back then. Even more, gaming changes at a very fast rate. Gaming now is very different from how it was 10 years ago, even more 20 years ago, and completely different thing for how it was during the 90s. And of course it wouldn't be a video by me without the sirens. <sighs> Where was I? Um, so yeah, it was completely different from how gaming was in the 90s. I mean, I don't think most people fully realize or just remember but back in the 90s, most people didn't give a shit about video games, let alone JRPGs. Back then, video games weren't cool, quite the contrary, actually. You were considered or labeled a major loser if you talk about video games at, in the wrong place at school. And games were not as accepted as a hobby as they are today. Uh, I think I'm stating the obvious here, but it's way more important than we, you might think, or you, that you t are taking for granted today. Eric says that we are experiencing the golden age because now you have a lot of people playing Persona and talking about it. And that's exactly the point. That's the most important thing he says in the entire video, and yet it does not elaborate it. Differently from the Super Nintendo and play PS1 generation, and the PS2 as well in a way, we have to remember that gaming is increasingly popular. Games are extremely more accessible, and even more important, one factor has changed everything. The internet, and as a consequence, social media, especially in the, these past 10 years. Saying that we're experiencing the golden age just because more people play our JRPGs and talk about them than 20 years ago means very little to me. <clears throat> it's a good thing, of course, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, we have to consider that more people play and talk about video games in general, not just JRPGs. To keep it simple, let's make a comparison. 
How many people play Persona when compared to the people playing Fortnite or even Call of Duty? Even though this series is not as popular as it used to be seven-ish years ago, when it was everywhere. Therefore, you can argue that JRPGs are still relatively niche, with the exception of the mainstream titles such as Persona or Final Fantasy, and lately Dragon Quest had a sort of resurgence here in the West, thank God, while in Japan has always been very big. But we have to ask ourselves, are JRPGs a dominant force like they used to be? The answer is, of course not. Maybe, and this is an interesting tangent that I want to make, JRPGs weren't as dominant as we like to think during those glory years of the PlayStation 1. But to be honest, it really felt that way. <clears throat> I constantly talk about JRPGs with my friends, and magazines, which were our internet in a way, spent so much ink on JRPGs. I still remember on PlayStation Magazine big articles, those like with 10 pages, in screenshots and all of that, on games such as Breath of Fire 4, Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy IX, all the big JRPGs, they spent a lot of time. So it felt that JRPGs were the big shit, but of course I had no idea what was going on outside of my microcosmos because I didn't have the internet. So. I didn't know what was going on in North America, I didn't know what was going on in Japan, and so on. I barely knew what was going on in my own country, let alone the rest of Europe and the world. At the end of the day, though, it's very simple. The overall number of gamers has increased exponentially throughout the years, especially since the mid to late 90s. But the number of JRPG players and fans did not increase as much, thus it seemed that the genre was declining because it was not as relevant as before. And I think this whole process follows a very simple pattern, actually. So you get quality games, even within a niche genre, will eventually catch up the attention of the mainstream market, hence growing in popularity. If the genre is more popular, studios are going to make more of them because, what a shocker, they want to make money. This is where we'll have the golden age, and everyone is happy, and uh, we're expecting the next coming of Jesus, the next Final Fantasy VII and all of that, but it's just simple market. In reality, I would say that from the PS2 days onward, the genre most likely stayed the same in terms of popularity, or it's likely increased because, again, the pool of gamers increased. Because after all, we also have to admit that JRPGs are not for everyone. I think that during the boom of the 90s, uh, casual gamers, and I hate to use this term, but it gives the idea, unfortunately, became more interested in JRPGs since it was sort of a new thing for them. Nothing wrong with this, of course, but I think it's not a coincidence that a lot of people would say that their first JRPG was Final Fantasy VII. Even in my case, I mean, JRPGs weren't new to me because I've experienced some of them during the previous generation, through the Sega Genesis primarily, because as I said, like, we didn't have them on the Super Nintendo, but for some reason Sega released some of them, like the Fantasy Star games were available in Europe, and Fantasy Star 2 is the first JRPG I ever played in my life, and I love that formula, contrary to the Ultima one. Uh, but I never owned one since they were, because as I said, they were so scarcely available in Europe before the PlayStation 1. That's when, with the PS1, we started to have a, a certain number of JRPGs coming and becoming available to us. Not all of them. For example, I never played Xenogears or Chrono Cross or the Lunar games. None of them were released back then. So we're still far behind, like, North America levels, and let's not even compare with Japan, but it was much better than nothing and much better than earlier. Um, but we also have to consider, like, the growing popularity of anime at the time, since they go hand in hand with JRPGs, even too much nowadays, I would argue. Um, However, once the buzz for the new thing ended, and the, again, I don't like it, but the casual gamer's attention was caught by something else, the, the new shiny toys, most of them left. Um, 
leaving just a small yet new branch of JRPG fans waiting for the next big thing. And I think in a way it's where we are now and here I'm also trying to conclude this thing as I can actually go on for hours but uh, let's try to summarize this. So are we experiencing the golden age of JRPGs as suggested by Eric Landon? Uh, no. On the other hand, are there a lot of great RPGs out there? Absolutely freaking lootly, and this is what really matters at the end. Uh, the genre must keep pumping out high quality games for us to enjoy so that because of social medias and other means at our disposal, we can share our passion for JRPG, JRPGs and ideally nurturing a new generation of fans who are growing up today playing great JRPGs on the PS4, on the Switch, on the Vita, but who am I kidding, no one, is care no one cares about that anymore. Especially because the Switch changed the game so much for a handheld console, but if you like Japanese games, you have to have a Vita, there's no ways around it. Uh, but so, like, these new gamers playing great JRPGs from, I don't know, just on the top of my mind here, uh, Nier Automata, um, Dragon Quest XI, uh, Trails, uh, Trails, uh, pfft, Trails of Cold Steel, I like, cannot remember the name of one of my favorite series now. Um, since it's growing in popularity thanks to Co the Cold Steel games, um, what else do we have? Mm, well, Tales is still around, even though they haven't released much lately. Final Fantasy is still going, even though, again, 15 wasn't really amazing, or at least, let's say, it, it really much divided fan, the fan base again. But uh, it's still there going strong, that's the important thing. Um, so, again, with all these great games, um, it would be great to bring them to us so that we with our let's let be presumption and say like with our experience we can uh, make them look at the great classics of our youth so they will experience the true golden age of RPGs but again who am I kidding they will look at those old and ugly PS1 games which are absolute treasures but again technology has changed and they'll just say, like, what the fuck is this shit? I don't have time to waste. This, I'm guaranteed this is what's gonna happen. And this is where I'm going to stop here. Because I said, I can go on forever, but I've talked too much. And now I would like to say that it's your turn, guys. What is, in your opinion, the golden age of RPGs? Do you agree with me? Uh, do you have a different idea and different theory? Uh, or maybe you'll agree with Eric Landon and disagree with me completely and... What do you know? That's totally fine. Uh, but let me know. Uh, I would be so interested to see what you guys think. Leave comments, or if you feel a little braver, do a video response. Why not? This is, after all, such an interesting topic. Uh, well worth of being discussed since, at the end of the day, it's just another excuse for me to share my love and passion for my favorite genre of games, which are obviously RPG, JRPGs. So thank you so much for listening, guys, and take care.